You are here because the outside world rejects you. This is your family. All right, everyone. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Armageddon game number one came out. I was trying to review it before New York Comic Con and get it out to you guys. But unfortunately, I did not finish in time. But it's okay. I'm back now from that trip, which was super fun, by the way. I got to meet so many cool and interesting people like this guy dressed up as Casey Jones. But now we can go ahead and break down that first issue of the Armageddon game. And we're going to go over everything that went down, talk about some of the big moments and discuss what we think is coming we will be discussing spoilers so if you haven't read the book make sure to go pick it up and then come back also if you don't know what the armageddon game even is make sure to go check out one of my previous videos the next big ninja turtle story i'll go ahead and leave a card for it right up here and it'll break down everything you need to know going into ninja turtles the armageddon game i'll also put it as a pinned comment down below in the comments but if you're all set let's waste no more time and jump into what happened in teenage mutant ninja turtles the armageddon game number one Issue 1 starts off with the Rat King, who in this version of the Turtles is part of the Pantheon family, eight divine beings that have been around for ages. This family used to play a supernatural game of conquest and chaos throughout Earth's history, manipulating and controlling the lives of others in order to create events in their favor. But now the Rat King has renewed this game, and judging by the name of it, the Armageddon game, the outcome will not be good if the Rat King wins. Now. In the opening pages, he can be seen visiting his sister Kitsune in what is called the Thin Places. This seems to be some type of pocket dimension under ours, sort of like the Upside Down in Stranger Things. Anyways, his sister Kitsune is currently indisposed and is regaining her strength ever since helping the Shredder prepare for the Rat King's Armageddon game. For those who don't know and got this far into the video, the Shredder has recently changed his ways and is now a good guy helping out the Turtles. Anyways, at first, the Rat King's other sister, Aka, who is there watching Kitsune, addresses the Rat King and asks if he's been spying on Kitsune and the Shredder. The Rat King says something along the lines that although he loves chaos, cheating is not his style, that all he knows is that opening moves have been made in this Armageddon game and that he's just there to wish them good luck. Now, although he says this, something about this interaction feels a bit off. He does seem to know a lot about what Kitsune and Shredder have been doing. And when he says, let the game truly begin, the expression on his face says a lot. Now, the next part of the story is what we saw in the five-page preview that came out. We have the Shredder who's now working with the Turtles, as we discussed earlier, and he's setting up a meeting with the Turtles and his granddaughter, Karai, inside of the Turtles' home. They are telling her about the Rat King's Armageddon game and how the Rat King has recruited Krang, who is currently stuck in Leatherhead's body, by the way. Another recruit is Baxter Stockman and a character named Madame Knoll. It appears Karai is hesitant about teaming up at first, but after she hears who the Rat King has recruited, for his side, she appears to be on board. And so the Shredder says that they'll have to split up. He tells Karai to focus on keeping watch of the city while Raphael and Jenica keep watch over Mutant Town, the walled off portion of New York City that got mutated back when the mutagen bomb went off around issue 100. Now, meanwhile, all this, Donatello will stay back in the Turtles' home since those are the coordinates that he knows best and he will need to have this as he's going to be teleporting Shredder, Leonardo, and Michelangelo to planet Neutrino of Dimension X to try to recruit some help for the upcoming events the Rat King has planned. Now the help they're trying to recruit is from a group we haven't seen too much of yet called the Nova Posse. Shredder also mentions eventually going to get help from someone else who is on Earth but that no one knows of their location. I don't know who he's talking about here but I have a feeling it's going to be a big reveal and come later on in the story. With all that said, the team understands their mission and they all go on their own way. I found this whole part pretty straightforward Although Karai does mention something about the Shredder getting all this information from Kitsune, and she seems to not like Kitsune's involvement in all this. They've had their history that we can talk about at some point in a separate video, but yeah, Shredder shuts down these doubts immediately and says it doesn't matter where I got this information, that what they need to do is act now. Only thing I'll speculate about this whole interaction here is that maybe just keep an eye on Karai. There seems to be some type of tension there that could backfire on the Turtles and Shredder. 
So everyone splits up and probably the most interesting stuff that happens in issue one is with Shredder, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. They are teleported to planet Neutrino on Dimension X to look for the Nova Posse and ask them for help. Now, when they arrive, Leonardo and Michelangelo are greeted as friends because of their past helping the Neutrinos, but Commander Dask of the Neutrinos appears to hold Shredder in a separate room due to the Shredder being the Shredder and his past, but eventually he is released. Now, Leo and Mikey are reunited with some old friends here that ended up staying on planet neutrino in some of the past turtles adventures we have the fugitoid and two scientists that have helped out the turtles in the past harold and libby so shredder leo and mikey wait for the neutrino royal family to arrive and when they do they explain to our team that unfortunately the neutrinos cannot help the turtles find the nova posse because of a treaty they have with another planet that considers the nova posse as traitors because the posse rebelled against that planet's chancellor chancellor mazul we'll see if this guy plays a part later in the story but yeah the neutrino king although he doesn't agree with everything chancellor mazul is doing he does not want to break the treaty because this could cause something far worse and destabilize everything so the turtles think they're out of luck here although the neutrino king has some tricks up his sleeve he tells commander dask that some of the other neutrinos zack and kala are due for some well-deserved leave from their royal duties so like a vacation and that they should take the turtles with them on this vacation unofficially of course so he's just offering it as a suggestion so yeah no doubt this is a way for the neutrino king to help out the turtles find the nova posse but off the books with no record of it which was pretty cool of him i thought this part other than the ending of issue one here was probably the most interesting part of issue one it will be cool to see the shredder leo and mikey go off in this other dimension and look for and meet the nova posse let's see what happens in the next issue with these guys All right, so let's jump over to what the rest of the turtles are doing here in this first issue. We jump over first to Raphael and Jenica, and we actually don't spend too much time with them here, but we do see them back in Mutant Town, and now they're accompanied by their friend Sally. They appear to be looking for Old Hob, a character the turtles have had a complicated past with. First, they were enemies, then they worked together for a little bit, but with reservations about each other, and recently, Old Hob has been at odds with them again, although it's sort of complicated this time. Hob is a wild card for me at this moment in the story. But anyways, if I had a guess, they're looking for him to ask for help to fight against the Rat King. Now, they can't find old Hob, so they go and ask one of his captured friends from a recent incident, Herman the Crab. Now, Herman won't give up Hob's location, but when he hears that there's a bigger danger coming, he says he'll take them to old Hob's location, and also that he wants to help in this fight against the Rat King. Like I said, we don't spend too much time here. This part's really quick, but it does really raise the question how will old Hob react when they come to him for help especially with that complicated past they've all had together now when it comes to donatello we only spent a brief amount of time with him as well we see him standing by in the turtles home on a call and this is him briefing april casey jones angel and mona lisa and he's just letting them know everything that's going on and coordinating with them he explains to them the rat king situation and they all have questions for him like what should they be looking out for he tells them that intel is limited at this point and to just keep an eye out for something that seems out of the ordinary which casey Casey Jones scoffs at, as at this point in the story, there's a lot of things that are out of the ordinary. Now, April says she'll keep an eye out on Baxter Stockman as she works for him now. But then, just as Donatello is about to end the call, someone comes up behind him, and it's a Triceraton that recently escaped from another evil Utrom, Chirel. Anyways, we don't see what they talk about as this part of the story cuts off right here, but I am curious to see how the turtles will react to the danger Chirel, the other evil Utrom, poses, and what part Chirel will play in this story. Now, let's get into some of the stuff that the bad guys are up to. We do get some very interesting stuff here, especially at the end. You're not going to want to miss that. That was the part I was looking forward to seeing the most, and we'll break that all down when we get there. But first, let's talk about what we saw with Krang. So first, we see two of Madame Knoll's mutants trying to capture Krang, who appears to be unable to control Leatherhead's body, which he's currently attached to. It's a long story. Anyways, his body is going berserk. And you can hear Krang yelling at everyone, trying to guide them on how to subdue the body. It takes a sting from Madame Noel's scorpion mutant to sedate him. And they are eventually able to capture 
Krang slash Leatherhead, or Leather Krang. Now, Leather Krang is taken to a facility where Madame Knoll ends up showing up, and the Rat King shows up there as well at the same time. Then we see Dr. Barlow, and now for those who don't know, we've seen this doctor before. He is the one that created this Turtles' version of Venus, and was also seen creating Turtle clones, or at least trying to. We suspected that he was working for Madame Knoll, and now we see them here together, and it appears he will be surgically removing Krang from Leatherhead. And spoiler warning for some of the upcoming future issues, it does appear, at least from one of the upcoming covers, that he is successful in this. Anyways, we'll wait to see what comes out of this. We also hear Dr. Barlow say that he recently delivered to Madame Knoll mutant turtle DNA that he got from Donatello. Now, I wonder if this is how they perfected the creation of the turtle clones that we'll talk about here shortly. As in some of the past Turtles issues, we did see that that there were some failed attempts before in trying to create these turtle clones. Madame Knoll says that the healing factor of the mutagen ooze in the mutants is just one factor that makes mutants so valuable on the multiversal labor market. Anyways, Rat King's watching all of this go down and he seems to be loving these new developments. I think it's safe to say his plan is going exactly as he wanted. Now, Rat King does say something interesting here when Baxter Stockman's name is brought up. He says that Stockman is set to play his part in tonight's later festivities. And from what we heard from April when she was talking to Donatello is that Baxter would be giving his State of the City address, as at this point in the story, he is the mayor now. And this is where we get what I believe will be the most entertaining element of the Armageddon game, at least in my opinion. So... Baxter is delivering a speech, and he starts to mention Mutant Town, the part of the city that has been walled off due to everyone getting mutated over there. He says we cannot be sure if our mutated neighbors can be trusted, but that everyone can rest assured that he, Baxter Stockman, will keep everyone in the human part of the city safe from any harm that will come from Mutant Town. And this is when someone yells lies, and it cuts over to the four Ninja Turtle clones that wear the white face mask that they've been teasing for months now in the comics. But now they're here. They say, safe and secure from the big bad mutants? Let's show everybody what a joke that is, fellas. And they start beating the crap out of everyone. One of the cops who knows who Michelangelo is thinks these are the regular turtles, and she starts to approach the one she thinks is Mikey, but the turtle clone clocks her in the face with the nunchucks, and after we can see her questioning who the heck these guys are. Anyways, the turtle clones take Stockman hostage, and security has guns pointed at them now at this point. And this is where issue one ends. Now, what the heck is going on here, you may be thinking. From what we know so far, Baxter Stockman's on Madame Knoll's, Rat King, and Krang's side, and the turtle clones appear to be one of Madame Knoll's creations. So what I think is going on here is that this is all for show to set up and to bring heat onto the regular Ninja Turtles. I believe the regular Ninja Turtles are being framed here and that Baxter Stockman is in on it. If you remember, the Rat King had said earlier that Stockman is set to play his part in tonight's later festivities. This is what I believe he was talking about. So now after all this, everyone's going to be going after the Ninja Turtles. It's going to be interesting to see how they react to all that. But yeah, that's issue one of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Armageddon game. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. What do you think of the story so far? Is there anything we missed? Go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. I can't wait to see what happens next. Now, for some of you who may not know, this story will bleed in to the ongoing regular IDW Ninja Turtles comics, the ones that have gone past 100 issues. So we'll break down and review the next one that drops of those, since it's technically going to be a part of this Armageddon storyline. And that's going to be issue 133, which as of this recording literally just came out. So make sure to go check out your local comic book shop and pick that up. I'm going to go ahead and start doing my breakdown and review for that as well. So stay tuned for that. But that's it for now. Thanks everybody for watching. Remember to follow on all the socials. Links are down below in the description. I'm seeing a lot of positive reaction to this first issue of the Armageddon game. I cannot wait to see what they do next. I will see you guys in a little bit with another one. Take care.